So what do we have here? We have some pistols. There's about 13 of them. Interesting. So where'd you get these? These were my grandfather's grandfathers. And they've been passed down to me uh, about 20 years ago. So did he rob banks, or? <laughs> I'm here at the pawn shop today to sell my pistol collection. I do believe most of the pistols are from the 1860s, 1870s. So I've kept them in the case. They've traveled with me from state to state as I've moved. They're in really good condition. I figured that nobody else in the family wanted them, that I would go ahead and see what I could get for them. I'm hoping to sell the entire collection for 6,500. Definitely got some cool stuff. They all look like they're 32 Rimfire, so I guess he collected 32 Rimfire. That's what he liked. What's 32 Rimfire mean? It was a popular caliber back then. After the Civil War, all the people that were making guns for the war were making civilian model guns like this. 32 was not a super powerful round. It will kill you, but less expensive guns could shoot it. If you had money, you'd go buy yourself a Colt Army or you'd buy yourself a Remington. If you didn't, you would buy one of these. This was actually a decent little gun, real convenient to slide inside a boot and everything like that. This was an inexpensive way to defend yourself, especially out in the Wild West. You have a little bit of everything here. Um, you know, can I make a phone call and see if I can get a buddy down here to look at this stuff? Yeah, that'd be great. You want to go give Alex a call? Sure. So how much you want for these things? So I was thinking probably about 500 each. So that'd be 6,500. Yes, sir. OK, um, that's a starting point. I mean, you got some neat stuff here. OK. Got a problem. What's that? Can't get a hold of Alex. OK. Um, I don't want to take a chance on losing them. I'll tell you what, because I'm sort of buying a pig and a poke here. I'll give you 3,500 for all of them. That's definitely lower than I was thinking. Could you do like 5,500? Here's the thing. I know there's money here. I just don't know exactly how much. OK, I'll tell you what. Four grand is like the best I could do. OK, I think that'll work. Yeah, let's do it. OK, sweet, four grand. Um, you want to go write them up, Corey? All right, come with me. It's going to take a while. <laughs> 13 Pistols, that'd be a great name for a Western. <laughs> you really should have waited for Alex to buy those. He's going to be here any second. You already bought him. I wanted a proper display, all right? See, there he is right there. Hey, Rick. How's it going? Good, man. How are you? I bought a collection of 32 caliber Renfire Pistols. <laughs> there are a ton of them. How much you pay? $4,000 for all of them. For all of them? For all of them, yeah. Uh, well. Let me take you through them. Here, what you have is a mix of Civil War pistols and cowboy pistols. So 1860s and 1870s. And so the bigger guns are all Civil War, and they got smaller over time. 32 Rimfire is a pretty underpowered cartridge. It wasn't really like a man stopper. The idea with the 32 Rimfire is that it was easily concealed. You could put it in a pocket. It would be quick for self-defense. This is your saloon pistol. You know, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're walking around, guys. <laughs> exactly. You consider it a bar, no one would know you're armed. The value is really dependent on the manufacturer and the condition. So this is an Allen and wheel lock. And this was made probably about 1861. What's rare about this is the brass frame. You can see here's another version of it, but it's all steel. Much more common. This is very, very difficult to find and it's in really nice shape. This is a Whitney mill. What's nice about this is, you see the bluing on it? That deep blue, that's original. And this bird's head grip, so you call it a bird's head because of the shape, I'm pretty sure that's rosewood. So this was like a really high-end, well-ordered gun. This guy right here, that is a Hopkins and Allen. What's so beautiful about this is this, this is all factory engraving. So that's a really nice, tight little solid gun. OK. What do you think they're worth altogether? Um, well, I can tell you I don't think any are reproduction. About half are Civil War. So the Civil War guns tend to start at about $1,000 at the bottom and then move up. This value on this, that's a $1,500 pistol. Damn. This one, you know, you're, you're close to $1,000 just on that. OK. Maybe more, though. So he did a fairly good job, right? Yeah, I think okay. 13 original 32 rim fires, $4,000 is a really good job. Without firing any, I would imagine that you'll double your money. If you can fire a few and, and they're really mechanically sound, you might even triple it. OK. I'd love to shoot some of them. 
Well, I'm gonna need a little time to just look them over, take them apart, make sure they're safe. All right, well, I'm gonna go eat lunch, hang out here, he's gonna inspect them. All right. All right. You know what you're doing, right? We'll see. All right, I trust you. <laughs> How do I know what goes where? Pick up the tag, pick up a gun, start looking through the guns, and find the right one. OK, this gun is nameless. What are you guys doing? Alex gave us all these tags, and we're trying to put them on the guns. Honestly, Rick, I have no idea what I'm doing. Why does that not surprise me? It's just hard to know which tag goes on which gun because they're so old. Just more of a new gun guy. I don't really have a reason to shoot old guns. Well, you have no really reason to shoot any gun because you can't shoot straight. What do you mean? Listen, I... I'm the best shot here, buddy. But yes, um, no, I could help you. No, we know who shoots guns better. That would be me. You're blind. Your hands are crippled. There's shoot... no way you shoot better than me. Always have. You, you can't see. Why don't you guys settle this at high noon? A little competition, maybe a little duel. I don't know about a duel. I think those are illegal. You don't have to shoot each other. Basically, a shooting contest. Well, we just go to the shooting range and I can beat him? I mean, if you want to get embarrassed, feel free. You guys should put some money or something up on this, or like some kind of bet. OK, we got cowboy guns here. If you lose, you got to be a cowboy and ride one of my horses that you're deeply afraid of. There's just a few things in this world I'm not into, and I'm not getting anywhere near a horse. I'll give you $1,000. I wouldn't do it for $1,000. That's a big bet, buddy. What do I get? He's been denying for years and years that he wants hair. You could put him in a wig. Not just a wig, a man wig. A man wig. A toupee. We're talking like not 24 hours or an eight hour shift. A or like, shift in the pawn shop. You know what? This is going to work out great because I'm going to win and then I'm going to rid my son of his fear of riding horses. Make a reservation at the range. Wear your best boots, boys. This is going to be a serious competition. Yeah. Um, it's not going to be a competition. You know you're going to lose. No, I'm not. You've already lost because you wore that outfit, man. You know, you should have dressed for the occasion. You really should have. Howdy, boy. Howdy, partner. You guys both look ridiculous. I think I might have to disqualify you just for you not wearing your proper attire. I guess I didn't get the memo. All right, well, here we are, chums, school of cowboys. You got 30 seconds, three stations, and you have to hit two targets at each station. The catch is, you only get one shot per target. At the end of it, whoever hits the targets the most time will be the winner. Personally, I love a good competition. If Corey wins, Rick has to wear a man wig, and if Rick wins, Corey has to ride a horse. Either way, it's a win-win for me. Let the best man win. All right, Alex has inspected all these guns. You guys are good to go. Granted, I typically shoot more modern weapons, but if he wants to challenge me, there's no way I'm losing this bet because I'm terrified of horses. All right, I'm first. You know what you're doing? I know exactly what I'm doing, chum. What means you at the finish line, Ricky? On your marks, get set, and go! I think he should be moving a little faster. One. Miss. He's running up. 15 seconds left. 10 seconds left. Miss. Have you hit one yet? Yeah, you hit one. And time. That's it. All right, you couldn't even complete the course. No, the gun jammed up. Okay. Excuses, excuses. And if you were in a real cowboy shoot off, it wouldn't matter if the gun jammed. Corey, you have to hit two targets in order to win. Well, this should be easy. You move a little bit faster than your dad, you should be able to get it all done. All right, you ready, Corey? On your marks. Get set. Go! One. Miss. Didn't hit those two. You still got 15 seconds. Miss. You got to get this, big hoss. All right. Two. Okay, no, hold on, hold on. Okay, my gun jabbed. I would have won. You lost, Ed. How, what do you mean you would have won? You didn't finish in time. Congratulations, Corey. Cowboy up, because this ball thing right here is going to be having a wig on it soon. Thanks, Pops. You cowboy up, Corey. I knew I was going to get screwed on this. Why do I even do these things? You look good in a cowboy hat. 
You want to meet me at the wig store before we go back to the shop? <laughs> Sounds good to me, man. Let's right. go. I can't believe he's still wearing it. So how much you sell that for? <laughs> hey, Edwin. <laughs> I think you look good, Pops. You know what? I'm covering my end of the bet. You should think about going across the street and getting a little trim. I mean, it's been a long okay. time since you got a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Uh, we had a little friendly wager, which they cheated on. Nobody and cheated. And I'm losing the bet, so I'm not going to welch on the bet. I'm a man. How come you got a boy's wig on? I'm going to tell you one thing like you tell me. You need to be presentable at work, so you need to go comb your wig. <laughs> it's getting a little messy. <laughs> oh, I got a brush right here you could use. Your opinions don't matter at all to me. I mean, doesn't it feel good to have hair on your head? No, it itches. <laughs> and it keeps on getting in my eyes. <laughs> Rick, it brings out the color in your eyes, though. The blonde highlights are amazing. Remember, I'm your boss. <laughs> Can you get back to work, Rick? I can't take you Rick. serious. I am a good sport. And no matter what, with or without wig, I'm still better looking than all of you guys. So <laughs> have a great day. Well, with or without wig, he's still delusional. That's for sure. Right. He looks like Ricky Bieber. He looked like Pinky walking backwards. <laughs> Don't talk bad about Pinky like that. <laughs>